tuning in, you are watching CMTV, and you are watching our beautiful program, Life in Christ Broadcast. And I always remain your host, Reverend Bertram Ginyu, Senior Pastor of Eternal Life Ministry. I'm taking messages and prayer requests from our, as our continuation. I'm just getting a comment from Comfort Chica, who says, Thank you, Jesus. And I say, Amen. I'm also getting another message from Mrs. Nabila, who says, Good evening, Reverend. Please pray for me against malaria as I can barely carry my body. Okay, Christian from Maliko Boya. Okay. I pray for you against malaria. And I'm going to connect you to the grace of God at work in me. I have always defiled malaria at all times. And we are talking about establishment in health. He said, none in Zion shall ever say I'm sick, for in Zion healing shall be the bread of the children. And by the stripes of Jesus we were healed. People may have justifications why we should have malaria, but I tell you, anything about sickness only happens under divine tolerance. It's not a normal thing. It's not normal for a Christian to be sick. It is not normal. It is abnormal, so it's an anormality. And God allows this anormality but when we have the audacity to balance it, we have to balance it. And I've been challenged by malaria many times, and I balanced it by the word of God. And somebody said, maybe it's just died down and it's going to come again harder. I'll kill the malaria and kill the devil. <laughs> I hope you understand what I'm talking about. The affliction shall not rise the second time. Father, I stretch my hand towards Christia. In this year of divine establishment, establish it. For this is the last time you are experiencing this this year in the name of Jesus. I don't speak you to be healed from this. I speak malaria to be terminated from your system. In the name of Jesus, I open the gates of divine health to you. Let there be an encounter. Let the grace of God open over you and be established in health in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, the same grace and benefit you've given me which you said the word of God is medicine to all flesh. You spoke to Solomon and you heard it in Proverbs chapter 4 that your word is medicine to our flesh. This word is medicine enough. Let it heal Christian now in the name of Jesus. Let there be testimonies in Jesus' name. Amen. So we ride on. I want to tell you that every time I pray and counsel many when I'm on air, there are testimonies. I mean, I'm, I'm going to have them to share these testimonies with you in a later time. And we continue to ride on. We were looking at what it takes to be established. So I said, first, first of what it takes to be established is a spiritual relationship, a spiritual establishment with God. Because everything in the physical is controlled from the spiritual. And I say you may have all your monies that you have now, but that doesn't mean you are established. It's not established. If you see, Noah established a spiritual connection with God. <laughs> uh, the reason why many people will want to always attach to a spiritual power for political dominance, financial dominance, is because they believe when there's a spiritual connection and a spiritual backing for all the cultists, occultists, when there's a spiritual tie from a spiritual power, the physical things you have, the money, relations, operations, can be secured and can be established. But it's not just for your lifetime. I'm talking about for lifetimes. God has the ultimate power when powers contend. That's why even civilizations no matter how much Pharaoh had magicians, no matter how much he had astrologers, no matter how much Nebuchadnezzar had astrologers and magicians, Daniel told him, Ha ha, oh, you shall be made like an animal and you shall be in the bush. And that happened. And when Moses threw down his staff, it turned to a snake. The magicians and astrologers also said, Boy, oh boy, we are good at this thing. We do it all the time. And Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, who was world power, economic power at that time, felt so secured because he had spiritual backings. And I tell you, God has the finances. And when he means business to make his move, nobody stands his way. 
And I tell you, the greatest stance you can take for an establishment in life is to establish a relationship with God. First, I spoke about an altar. The altar is all about recognition of the deity. And I'm, I'm, I'm not saying here you go and build a small altar in your house. I'm saying, first of all, recognize the grace of God operating through Jesus Christ receiving as your Savior and your Lord. Number two, recognize the grace of God operating in the church, in his ministers. Because without this submission and recognition, God walks through men. It means you reject him. Second, after the altar, after the recognition is the sacrifice. Your commitment, the sufferings you go through. Jesus said, if anyone wants to follow me, he should forget himself, deny himself, himself carry his cross and follow me. So there is a cross to carry. He said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. It is done by the love of God, which spurs your love for God. And I've treated that on this Our Same Life in Christ broadcast, and you can find it on www.cmtvplus.com. And if you want to get to it through straight the link, you can always send me the directive. Just send, please, I need the link of that or link. And you send the link of the message you want, the love of God. So sacrifice is the dimension that establishes your spiritual connection. And you know it's a spiritual principle, whether with God or how the devil wants to mimic divine operation. It's a spiritual principle. Sacrifice. What you give them. What, what you do to make sure that it's maintained. All right. With Jesus, what do we have to sacrifice? You don't have to give money. You don't have to give anything. All you need to do is given the time you have to give to study God's word. Given the time you have to give to pray. Given the time you have to give to fellowship with the saints. God is not asking any money from you. God is not asking anything from you. God is asking your heart. For there is no way you can walk with God except by the love of God. So the first thing for, for establishment that marks all other forms of establishment is spiritual establishment. So we move now on this aspect of recognition and reverence to God to Genesis chapter 17. In Genesis chapter 17, after a long time of Abraham discussing with God, God comes to Abraham. That is from verse 1. He said, I am El Shaddai. God introduces himself to Abraham. And he said, walk before me and be blameless. Hear my word. Obey my word from you for you and your descendants. I said it. Whether you think that you are hooked up to a babalao, you are hooked up to a soothsayer, you are hooked up to a man that does spiritual mysteries, it cannot last and it will not last. Jehovah God has the final say. The devil or cultists Men of the underworld, whatever covenant you have, cannot operate when God says stop. That is why we men of God, we sons of God, custodians of God's principles, when we say a word by God's grace, not by our strength, it stands for all time. And we stand to destroy demonic operations. And it doesn't matter what is happening in the world. Revelation chapter 17 verse 14 says, Even the kings of the earth shall make war against Christ and the, and the Lamb of God. But Christ shall win him and his saints, they that are called, chosen, and faithful. And I tell you, Jehovah has the final say. And that final say is spoken through his sons. We are established and our word is final. There may be a time God allows the operation of darkness or evil, but he has a final say. And we, in Christ, in the authority given to us by God in the grace of oppression, have the final say. So God is not unwise, but he's a very wise God. And he loves us so much and will not give us over to darkness. Colossians chapter 1 says he has transferred us from the dominion of darkness into the kingdom of his son. I have a message here coming. Man of God, please pray for me. God should break the yoke of barrenness in my life. Barrenness is not your portion. I pray for exposure. What I'm going to pray for you is for divine exposure to the mysteries of heaven. You are called to be fruitful. You are supposed to bear kids. I didn't get your name. I don't know where, you're pray, where you, are, you are writing from. 
But I pray for you in the name of Jesus. Father, you know where she sat and wrote this message from. There is no woman that was barren except the one you cursed, who mocked at your servant David because he sacrificed and danced for you to the displeasing of men. But everyone that was barren and came to you, you heard them. I've seen women deliver children at nine, children at 11 give birth. I have seen women at 90 give birth. There is no age with you. Hear the cry of this woman now. By this simple weak prayer I have to a strong God like you. And let there be fruitfulness in the name of Jesus. I speak an opening. Let there be an encounter that will overtake you. And let every altar of oppression of darkness be silenced in the name of Jesus. Let this woman bring forth fruit. Marriage is a blessing. And let it be to you by fruitfulness in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to see your amen through the same medium you sent the text to me. I have another prayer request. Man of God, please help me. There are times I make up my mind to serve God. I would do it for some, for some time. And after a while, I find myself not doing it again. And when I want to study my Bible... I can see your amen. Please send me your name and where you wrote from, whom I just prayed for previously. And when I want to study my Bible, I don't even know where to start. Please help me. Tell me what to do. All right, this is counseling. I'm going to tell you what to do. I want to tell you everybody starts and at points in time stumble. But there is a way you grow to be established in the faith, in Christianity. First of all, you must be established in prayer. Second, you must be established in the word of God. Third, you must fellowship with the saints and with those that provoke the oppression of the grace of God at work in you. Apostle Paul speaks in uh, Hebrews chapter 10 from verse 24. He said, brethren, consider to, to spare one another to love and to good works. And John says, this is how we know that we love him when we carry out and obey his commands. Good works is all about exercising the endowments of the spirit of God. And in verse 25, he said, do not give up the habit of meeting together as some are doing. Always meet. So there is the need for you to be spared by the right, right company. The wrong company will wreck your destiny. But when you allow yourself to associate with the right people that can spare you, those that can provoke grace, those that can rebuke you, those that can correct you, those that can pull you over, there will be no point of falling and there will be no reason to stay down. All men stumble. Great men rise back. You have to fail forward. So we are going to talk more about it. And I'm going to share more with you. We move further to, we have already touched Psalm 96 verse 10. And so I take you now to the New Testament. It's just Romans chapter 1 from verse 11 and even verse 12. So I'm just going to quote that because we are closing. I'm rounding off. Apostle Paul said, I pray that I should come to you. That I may impart unto you some spiritual gift to the end that you be established. That is so that you and I, our mutual faith, shall be stirred or spurred. I have spoken that to be established, what it takes to be established first is your spiritual recognition of divine grace. Your spiritual recognition of Jesus who has the final say for everything that is happening in the world. And if you've never received him, this is your opportunity. I believe you've been hearing about Jesus. If you've not heard about Jesus, Christ, who is King of Kings and Lord of Lords, who stands and is God himself, you can ask me more questions. The number is there on your screen. He's the one through whom all things are established for all time. If you build your house today, you build your village today, you give all the energy you can give, and after years, you go back and it has been taken over and you cannot recognize it, you leave at the time when you were operating, it was yours. But you would discover it was taken over by another force because it was never established. So for there to be establishment, there must be a spiritual connection, spiritual recognition. Second, there must be a response and a reverence and a commitment by sacrifice through that spiritual, to that spiritual uh, thing that you recognize, to that spiritual oppression that you recognize. So I, I differentiated the sacrifice that you don't think God is needing money or some things that you have. Give him your heart. 
give him your attention. Your attention is what God needs from you. Your attention. Your attention. Your attention is all that you have. Every other thing he doesn't need. Apostle Paul said God doesn't need anything made with men's hands. There is nothing you can give to God that he doesn't have. Everything is his. But the devil doesn't own anything. But all things belong to God. All things belong to God. All things. He created all things. So what can you give him? There is no physical thing you can give him that doesn't belong to him. But he wants your heart. He wants your attention. He wants your time. And everything that will come as a result of that is coming from what he provides to you. God can ask you something he didn't give you. So in the New Testament, we see Paul said I impart you with spiritual gift. The demonstration of the power of the Holy Spirit is what guarantees establishment in the life of a believer. When we go to the Old Testament, God spoke blessings. And I want to say, until the blessings that God speak begin to happen, it is not established. Until the prophecy given to you is manifesting, it is not established. So how do you cause a prophecy to be established? Your commitment to that prophecy, to realize it and to see it come to pass. I spoke about commitment. The time you give to commit it and put it to work. God had spoken to the nation of Israel about their captivity and release. And after 70 years, they were still in captivity. Daniel said, I understood by the books that this is a prophecy. God spoke the word through his honored prophet and it seems like it wasn't established. So Daniel took on and said, I will see this word established. And Daniel began to fast and pray, which we call now Daniel fast. So that's the kind of sacrifice I'm talking about. The altar was there. Every Israelite knew God. But they needed a man to make a move for the establishment of that prophecy. So it takes your sacrifice. When you recognize God, when you commit yourself to see the word of God come to pass, to hear him and to know him, that brings about spiritual establishment. Then you can have favors, as we find in the life of Noah, economic prosperity. That stands the test of time. You can have social establishment where the people are for your favor. I can't talk much. You are also going to have establishment in health whereby divine healing, divine health is your portion. You can have establishment in the policies that govern your life and you can affect and change national policies and the policies of government. The early church did it and changed even policies of Rome. God said it is he that works in you to will and to do of his good pleasure. So resolution, your own strong will and decision can do it all. It needs the grace of God to operate in you for his will to be established. And Apostle Paul says, we attempt, Christ was tempted at every point like us and we are weak. But let's come before the throne of grace and obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. And Solomon says, the race is not for the swift, not the battle to the strong, but time and chance happens to all. Then he says, again, it is not to him that willeth, not to him that runneth, but to him that obtains mercy. So you need mercy to operate an established life. And Apostle Paul says, for the believer's life in Christ, you need to operate in the power of the Holy Spirit. You need to operate in the gift of the Holy Spirit because the gospel and the Christian life, no before mob, let me say it in pigeon, is in the demonstration of the power of God. So I pray for you as I leave you now, that the grace of God be established in you in the name of Jesus. That you won't fail to recognize God in your moves in life. You won't fail to gather your family and pray in the evenings. You won't fail to gather your families and pray in the morning. You won't fail to wake up at night just to give God thanks. You won't fail to appreciate God when good things happen. You won't fail to devote yourself to the things of the Spirit. I pray for the grace of God to come over you. In a time when the love of many shall wax cold, that everything you are doing shall be established. For what shall it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? 
And everything you do that is established on earth and in heaven is that which has a final establishment in heaven. And Apostle Paul says in Colossians chapter 3, verse 3, Set your minds on things above, not on things below, where moth and everything can eat, men of the, of the underworld can take away. The earth will pass away and everything in it. I pray that as you labor for God, as you walk with God, you shall find his reward in the name of Jesus. On earth, Jesus said to Peter a hundredfold. In heaven, in the age to come, eternal life. I pray that you will see a hundredfold of your toil as you obey and walk according to the voice of God in the name of Jesus. I pray that you will not pursue earthly things, worldly things, but as you strive to walk and to walk with God, I pray that benefits and response will come to show your prosperity in every aspect of life in the name of Jesus. You are blessed with all blessings. In Jesus' mighty name. Once again, you were watching Life in Christ, and I remain your host, Reverend Betram Ginyu, Senior Pastor of Eternal Life Ministry. I always bring you greetings from our church. And if you want to worship with us, we have Bible studies every Wednesday at 4. We are directly behind Kojeni Bonduma Boya. And on Fridays, we have prayer meetings from 5. You are free to join us for counseling and or anything that has to do with search. You are free to join me on Fridays at 4 p.m. or on Tuesdays at 4 p.m. And I'll be ready to talk with you, to speak with you, pray with you. And why not join heads with you on the things you have to do? So you can join us in our services as well. You can meet me for one-on-one -on -one talks. I'll find it so joyful and a privilege to share the word of God with you on a one-on-one -on -one note. Greater blessings are coming. And don't forget, we are live every Monday at 5 p.m. GMT plus one. Get ready to tune in next week, Monday. There shall also be a read broadcast on Wednesdays and probably on Thursdays. Please, if you need any more information, you can send a text to the number that is displayed on your screen or as well write to me through WhatsApp. God bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. See you next week, Monday, live at 5 p.m. Amen.